for hosting me at this conference, of course, in this complicated uh, political situation that uh, uh, you must suffer. Uh, I would like to uh, talk about more, uh, let's say, technical topic today than most of our pre-speakers pre uh, about pass keys. I will, I will start by question. How many of you already know what pass keys are? Excellent. So that's, uh, that's a good audience because there is a lot of education to be done today. So let me tease you up a little bit by saying that you can imagine a world where you can log into your internet banking just by using your Touch ID on your MacBook or Windows Hello in your Windows PC with no additional installations, with no friction, just like that. You just click the button and it's done. This is what passkeys are all about. But before we dive into it, let me start with something which is more fun. A required regulatory background, of course, <laughs> because that's, that's definitely something we need to cover. Many of these topics were already discussed to some extent today. And, uh, of course, you know that uh, European banking is currently governed by the PSD2 framework. We have barely recovered from it, and we are already expecting PSD3 to happen. So, uh, interesting stuff, interesting stuff. And uh, open banking, uh, it was actually the main topic, which was initially discussed with PSD2. But it wasn't so easy, actually, because the idea was that third-party providers are suddenly able to access the precious data of the customers, which, of course, was quite a big talking point for banks. And there were two contradictory requirements. In one point, banks didn't want to just give away the data of their customers to third parties, so there was a security concern. But on the other hand, banks were able to make it quite unusable completely, uh, because if they wanted to stop third parties to have good user experience, nobody would use it. So this is why there are regulatory technical standards on strong customer authentication. This was basically the point. And very soon, banks actually realized that PSD2 is not so much about open banking. That's how it started. But it's more about how they authenticate customers. A strong customer authentication can make or break the user experience. It can make or break how people pay on e-commerce sites, how they log into the internet banking, how they, for example, use their identity, which was discussed in the previous conversation, which I didn't understand at all because I don't speak Russian. <laughs> so, uh, but I saw the slides, so I, I kind of got it. I'm a smart folk. <laughs> and uh, uh, strong customer authentication is, first of all, about introducing multi-factor authentication in banking with independent authentication factors, dynamic linking, and, of course, additional security requirements. I like to use this diagram to actually explain it. I am a programmer, after all, so I like diagrams. You can see that I'm a programmer because I completely misjudged my dress code again, so I'm incapable of making appropriate dress code. But uh, this uh, uh, diagram actually shows that everything starts with authentication factors in the top, like possession knowledge biometrics. Then there is a payment information, like amount and account of the other party. Then there are some funky cryptographic things that you need to have involved to make it work. And strong custom authentication is this box in the middle, this uh, kind of an engine uh, or a Swiss watch uh, um, instrument, which turns these uh, three information into so-called authentication code, which is strongly linked with transaction proven by authentication factors and typically based on cryptography. But just looking at strong cust custom authentication like this isn't enough. Many of the banks actually completely rethought their customer experience when authenticating. Of course, uh, many of the banks started with something we call silo, silo identity. Um, long story short, they were buying a lot of solutions, internet banking for retail or corporate customers. And as a result, they had multiple usernames, multiple replicas of user identity, which made it quite complicated to actually manage this ecosystem. And what we saw is that successful banks introduced one place for the customer identity, identity provider using identity federation, so that all applications, no matter what, uh, use case, what the use case is, can actually leverage the same credentials, the same authentication method. You can use the same uh, approval via push notification when you are making e-commerce payment on your favorite e-shop. You can use it to approve payment from the, log from, from the internet banking. You can prove it... Uh, you can prove your identity against e-government with it. We have a very strong bank ID scheme in the Czech Republic where you can actually log into e-government through your bank, which is something that uh, will probably get more traction with the European ID wallet, as was discussed a bit earlier. 
So now there are quite a lot of standards, quite a lot of benefits that banks got from it. Uh, they consolidated systems, unified the user experience, of course, improved security. If you look at authentication in the, in the US, for example, people still log in with their social security number. Uh, American authentication is basically illegal in European Union and even outside of it. And uh, of course, banks were able to provide more applications. So relying on standards, best practices is something which is helpful. And this actually gets us to the passkey topic. Uh, I will start by introducing FIDO2. FIDO2 uh, is uh, proposed by FIDO Alliance, which is a group of uh, large companies, uh, Apple, Microsoft, all of these, who actually didn't get to passkeys and FIDO2 by just uh, thinking about banking. They are solving a much bigger problem of passwords. We all have passwords. They are all terrible. We all have to remember it or, or use password manager. It's, it's a mess. Uh, typically, people shouldn't reuse passwords, so they just invent some random stuff. Uh, it doesn't really work. And uh, uh, I must say that uh, FIDO Alliance was solving the passwords problem since 2013, so they are probably paying paid by the hour because it takes them quite a long time. But if you look at it from the broader perspective, they had quite a big ambition. They made authentication part of the entire digital ecosystem. Currently, every hardware you buy, an iPhone, any Samsung device, any computer, is actually capable of uh, FIDO2 standards. Similarly, operating system, be it Windows, Linux, macOS, supports FIDO2. Similarly, web browsers, all of the web browsers currently support FIDO2, and uh, mobile apps as well. So, as a result, you can actually use cryptographically strong authentication in every device that is currently on the planet in mobile apps or web browsers. You don't need to build it. The front end is already done, and uh, you can just implement the service in your backends. So that's uh, FIDO2. And how it works, that's a bit of a techie diagram. It uses challenge response principle. The idea is that people have authenticator, which stores their private key. They register public key at the bank, and then bank presents challenge, and customer provides signed challenge as a response as the authentication approach, quite straightforward. So there are two types of authenticators. The first one is built in. It's a platform authenticator. It means that you can use your laptop as an authenticator. You just click a button to log in, and you use your touch ID. That's how you log in. Alternatively, you can buy an additional authenticator connected via USB, uh, Bluetooth, or NFC. However, the benefit is that you don't need to think about it. It is already supported. Every web browser has a JavaScript API, which can give you this type of authentication. Simple, straightforward. And passkeys are basically customer brand for FIDO2. They were recently popularized by Apple in actually 2022, Apple made it a part of their iOS 16, and uh, recently there were quite a lot of announcements about uh, big service providers supporting passkeys as the primary means of authentication. Google Workspace, since April this year, recently Uber actually uses passkeys, like two weeks old announcement after the very long decade, almost decade long effort. So customers and uh, your uh, users of digital applications will have this experience everywhere else, they will get used to it. So I, I don't know if you have noticed, but uh, authentication in banking was always a bit different than authentication everywhere else. So this is now changing with passkeys. The idea is that old types of authentication used on the internet were just insufficient. That's why banking had to be a little bit more uh, strong in how you authenticate customers, but you don't have to anymore. You can just uh, go with all other market verticals. So what are the benefits? Why should you think about passkeys and study it more and maybe talk to uh, somebody who already implemented passkeys for other institutions? First one is you don't need any application. You don't need to build complex infrastructures for push notification delivery. You can just use passkeys. They are built in in your ecosystem. It's still pretty user friendly. You can use Touch ID as you, as you currently do, but no need for application. It is the most secure authentication method available today. Actually, what banks currently use is level seven, codeless. This is what you have when you use push notifications. Level eight, passless, is built into the operating system. Therefore, it can provide additional uh, security benefits. 
for example, phishing resistance. With pass keys, you always authenticate on a specific site. So if you are on a phishing site, the web browser doesn't even present you the authentication challenge. So it's by design resistant from phishing. Every authentication response that you have from the customer actually contains the domain where the authentication response was made. So people cannot log in from some wrong phishing site just because it looks similar to whatever you currently produce. Of course, there are some use cases that are more suitable for passkeys now, specifically corporate banking, SMB banking. If you imagine some accountant um, sending payments, you can link the payments to their devices. But also premium or, or private banking, sometimes your services do not need mobile application at all, so you need some alternative. And finally, you will have some security aware clients, those typical readers of uh, uh, PC magazines, uh, which are kind of uh, uh, telling them what to do, and they will be asking about passkeys. So this was uh, everything from me. Thank you very much uh, for listening. And just a little bit about Vultra as a last, last moment. Uh, so sorry for interrupting <laughs> your, your appreciation. Uh, so we are a cybersecurity company based in Prague in the Czech Republic. We are working with the financial industry for almost a decade. We currently have customers in 13 countries. We have some excellent partners in Ukraine. For example, GD Next is a sponsor of this uh, conference. And uh, of course, if you would like to discuss any topics related to customer authentication and frictionless user experiences, please uh, do not hesitate to get in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you.